You know, I, I think this is probably Pakistan's weakest link. Uh, fundamentally, we talk a lot about the world not looking at our side of the story, the world leaning towards India, um, Pakistan having certain facts under its belt which are not being entertained on Kashmir, on other things. And I keep arguing that the world has never been a fair place. This is not about fairness. This is not about friendship. You've got to make your case in the language and in the currency that the world wants to hear. And the world has moved from the primacy of geostrategy since the end of the Cold War to if not primacy, an equivalence for geoeconomics. And I think our biggest problem is that we still only speak the language of geostrategy because we haven't really integrated into the geoeconomic world. So if we want to show and work through the world uh, to get India to have an even handed um, compromise or deal, you're basically, you're going to have to talk about your economic strength. You're going to have to start making the world interested in you rather than worried about you. And then I think the same countries that you think are against you, you will find, will have the same kind of relationship with you as they, you think they may have with India today. I don't think it does. Look, I mean, I think at some level it matters because there's protocol. You have to say who's at a ministerial, who is your foreign minister. You have to, you know, designate that every time. Um, Quite frankly, my view of the people who are running the Foreign Office right now is very positive. Uh, I, I know all of them personally and I think they're top-notch professionals. So I don't think there's a problem with bureaucracy. Uh, yes, the fact that you don't have a foreign minister changes the mindset of both your prime minister, who's also the foreign minister, and maybe other institutions who have to deal with the Foreign Office. So I think in that sense, of course, having a full-time foreign minister, I mean, it makes no sense not to have um, the current leadership assume the role that they're already playing. So I'm all for it. But you know, the argument that it's because of this that you're not being able to project foreign policy, I don't buy that. There's certainly a larger foreign policy problem because our foreign policy is still too closely wedded to a security policy. And if we've got to have a real foreign policy, you've got to have a geoeconomic strategy, you've got to have a separate geostrategic strategy, if you will, and you've got to use other elements of uh, soft power, including image, where I think Pakistan is probably uh, one of the worst projected countries uh, in the world, unfortunately. <laughs> this is one of those questions that we talk a lot about. You know, I'm often asked in Pakistan by uh, civilian and military uh, people, and why are you saying Pakistan needs to do this and that? Why don't you talk about India? And my answer very simply is that I'm not India. I mean, it is India's problem to figure out how they are going to make peace with Pakistan or whether they want to do it or not. If I were Indian, I would be making a much stronger case than I make to Pakistan that India needs peace with Pakistan for its own good. And that good is that India will not be able to play the real big league game it will not be able to make a case for the UNSC. It will not be able to break the shackles of the regional economy in a way that it needs to, to compete, let's say, with China or whoever, unless it makes peace with Pakistan. And, you know, wishing Kashmir away is not going to solve the problem. And equally, wishing terrorism away for Pakistan is not going to solve the problem. So conversation has to continue. But neither side is going to be able to keep up with the world if they don't make peace with each other. It's our compulsion, but equally I argue, if I were Indian, I think it's India's compulsion. Well, I mean, they're entrenched mindsets, so it's very difficult. You know, uh, you've seen after the most recent Chaya Praya dialogue, there's been a crisis on the LOC, there's been problems. And if you turn, um, tune into media on both sides, you feel like the TV anchors are going to sit in tanks and cross the international border after they finish their program. So there is that entrenched hawkish mindset. The question is, are you hurting yourself more than the other side by doing that? That's the question I have to ask myself and, and people on the other side should ask as well. That's the question I, sitting in Washington as the international community, ask. Whether letting this fester is ultimately going to be worse for everybody or is there a way to make this happen? So don't forget that in 2006-07, you know, Khurshid Kasuri has just written a whole book when he was foreign minister. Apparently, we were within touching distance of actually making a breakthrough. So there are ways to get there.
It's just about getting out of our entrenched mindsets on both sides and moving forward. But moving forward in a way that's sustainable. That's not just point scoring, but it's really finding a way to keep this process going. And this is going to be a slow and steady uh, sort of wins the race kind of argument. I think fundamentally what's going on right now uh, is not about NSA is not meeting, it's not about India uh, doing what it's doing or Pakistan what it's doing. I think, if I understand this correctly, this is the first time, you had a time when Pakistan used to argue Kashmir only. We'll talk about Kashmir and then we'll talk about everything else. Then, uh, late 90s, Vajpayee Nawaz Sharif, but even before that I would argue, you started moving to a point where we said, okay, all things on the table, but Kashmir is important. And then you started seeing some progress here and there. This is the first time I find India now arguing terrorism only, terrorism first, and then we'll worry about the rest. So it's from one extreme to the other. And I think the game right now is not about missing one uh, uh, sort of round of talks or not. It is about India trying to figure a way out to get terrorism above everything else as the agenda point and making that the new normal. And Pakistan desperately trying to make sure that that doesn't happen, lest Kashmir sort of goes quote-unquote on the back burner, as we like to say it. So I think this is about a strategic paradigm shift in terms of how they negotiate that's bothering both sides, or one is trying to take advantage and the other is trying to uh, mitigate against that, uh, rather than just a particular conversation in UFA or, or the NSA talks that, that happened or didn't happen. I think that's again the question. Uh, is it, at least on the Pakistani side, I find people believing that that's India's game plan. Isolate Pakistan, only talk about terrorism. If you don't talk about terrorism, we're not interested because we are rising, you are not, right? Okay. Um, on the Indian side, I think the argument is, well, you guys are not serious about terrorism. And if you're not serious about terrorism, we don't have a compulsion. We'll sit on this. And if we sit on this for 10 years, with our economic growth, the differential between my country and your country will be 10 times it is now, or five times it is now, or three times it is now. We won't have to talk to you at that point. So you, Pakistan, decide. Do you want to play this game or not? I think if that's the mindset, it's unfortunate. Because as I said, it's equally important for India and Pakistan to make peace. I think Pakistan needs to absolutely come clean on the Mumbai trial. Whatever needs to happen there, whatever the reasons are for delay, I think there needs to be a serious conversation. But ultimately, Pakistan, it's incumbent on Pakistan because the trial is still open to do whatever it takes to, to satisfy within the legal parameters whoever is looking at this. On the other hand, equally than Samjota, the Samjota Express trial, India has a responsibility. But you know, both sides have to act as grown-ups, own up to the problems and address them rather than hiding, hiding behind saying you are more hawkish than I am. Both are hawkish in their own right. My point to India and Pakistan always is, don't worry about what is going to happen to the other side at the end of the day. Worry about whether you are going to lose out if you don't make peace and then move forward.